Oh, so let's see. Praise God. All right, so let's. So we're going to do something kind of different. Uh, we're in the book of Psalms today, Psalms chapter one. Uh, all right, perfect. You have your Bibles, or you have it on the phone. So we're um, the, this sermon is called "We're Still Here," and it comes from a few different things. So my next CD that's going to come out in the fall is actually called "We're, we're Still Here." And so it has a few different meanings to it. So one, there's a song where I'm talking about the persecuted church. The churches around the world. So I think it was in um, Nigeria a few weeks ago where they were going to Christians and they, they were just slaughtering them. They were murdering Christians because they were Christians. And even in the midst of that, since the beginning of the church, they have been experiencing persecution. And us in America, unfortunately, we don't have that. Um, but... So that's kind of one of the songs that's saying, we're still here. Christianity is still here and it's still thriving. And no matter what they do to us, we're not going to stop uh, serving God. They can take our lives, they can take our possessions, but we're still going to serve God. There's another song where I'm just ta- talking about, you know, the experiences I had uh, since I've been in Austin and how financial issues and things like that and how I suffered and saying, God, I was at a point where I didn't know if, if you were real anymore. I experienced those, those things where I said, you know what, God, I don't, I don't know if you're real. Or if you're real, I don't know if you're good. Maybe you are all powerful, but you're not helping me. So, God, maybe you're just not good. And so, um, so God brought me out of that. And so I'm saying, okay, we're still here. Yes, we go through things. We're, we're oppressed on both sides, but we're not crushed and we're put down. But we're not going to give up. God is still here and we're, we're still we're rising up. Um, and and so, so things like that. So I wanted to talk about that and as we go on so we're going to be in psalms chapter one i'm so i'm going to read it and then we're going to kind of break it down and i'm going to let y'all ask some questions that, or any comments and things like that all right so the verse one and according to my translation it says blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of scoffers but his delight is in the law of the lord and on his law he meditates day and night all right, so the first thing it says, blessed is the man. So other translations say happy is the man and things like that. But it's not just, last week, uh, if y'all weren't here, we talked about the happiness. Happiness is not just, oh, I feel good today. You know what? Uh, you know, I'm, uh, but it's, it's more so like, you know, internally, I, I have a strength. My situation around me is not going perfect or maybe it is going good. But if it's not going good or something happens with the car or whatever, I'm still able to, to make it. I'm still able to push. So it's, it's that kind of happiness. It's that joy. Joy of the Lord is what he's talking about. So he's saying, happy joy is the man or woman. Obviously, it's not just for us men and women. You're kind of lucked out. But it says, happy is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. He doesn't stand in the way of the sinners. He doesn't sit in the way of scoffers. Me. So my parents were watching uh, the TV show El Chapo. Uh, so obviously, you know, he's a drug lord. And they said, you know, he, he's a millionaire, right? He's a multimillionaire. But he, they look at him and they're like, but that's no way to live. Because at any point, he's inside of a club or he's inside of a restaurant. The cops come, they say, you got to leave. So he has to leave and he's on the run. If you think about it, um, Bin Laden, they found, or no, it was uh, Saddam Hussein, right? They found him in a cave, like hiding in a cave. Like He's the most powerful person in that area, but that's no way to live. And so that, as you were talking, I was like, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, you can have all this stuff, but if you're living, um, you know, in a way where you're always anxious, you're always wondering, man, I, I burned this person, I mistreat this person, is that, you know, in, in worldly terms, is that karma going to come back to me? You know, you, you reap what you sow in, in biblical terms. So there's three verbs. So he's saying, okay, so it kind of happens progressively. So you don't walk. All right, so let's say, you know, I'm walking with a guy and, you know, he's not, you know, he's kind of shady or whatever. And I'm trying to live for God and I'm walking with him. Okay, so at the end of the day, we can go in two different directions. We're walking, we're talking, we're like, you know, this guy is not really living in a way that I want. You know, I want to provide for my family. I want to do what's good. I want, you know, I want a nice house and I want nice vehicles and things like that. But I don't want, I don't want that bad, you know, that I don't want to live with those people and walk with them. So at the end of the day, he goes his way and I go my way. So we're walking. You're you're actively doing something. And like you said, now now he's standing. He's kind of, you know, he's kind of like listening. Like, you know what, let me listen to this advice. Let me, instead of walking and being active, he's kind of like, let me um let me kind of listen to what this person has to say. 
And so he's, you're no longer being active. You're no longer walking out. But instead, you're kind of standing and you're, you're, you're saying, you know, let me, let me start listening to these guys. And then the last verb is sitting. He's no longer walking and being active. He's no longer standing, but now he's sitting. He fully, he just sits down. He says, you know what? I'm going to take part in this. And this is going to be what I'm going to start doing. At first, so the first thing he says, he does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. He doesn't take their advice. He doesn't listen to what they're saying. But then he doesn't stand in the way of the sinners. Now he's, you know, now he's standing, he's stagnant. And, you know, maybe he'll, he'll start walking again. But then now once he sits down, he's like, okay. I'm going to take part in what they're doing. What they're doing now sounds good. And what they're doing now seems like a good way to live my life. And so what, what, uh, what David is saying, he's saying the man who doesn't do those things is blessed. The man who doesn't do those things, who doesn't walk in the council, who doesn't take the advice of the wicked, he doesn't make company of those people. But instead, in verse 2, he delights in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. So uh, typically in, in most Bibles, if you open the Bible in the middle, it's, it's the book of Psalms. It's, it's the center. And so I, I like the book of Psalms because David and all the other writers, they're able to express how they're feeling. Um, when Susie would talk and pray to God, she's like, God, I'm frustrated with you. Why are you not doing this? And I was like, don't talk to God like that. In my mind, I was like, he's going to strike you down. So I was like, you don't talk to God like that. You got to respect God and you got to honor God. And, and that's true. But I, um, I, I kind of made, um, what is it called? It was, almost, it was almost fake. Because I was talking to God cliche. Oh God, you're holy, you're mighty, you're wonderful, you're creator. Um, you know, thank you for this, this, and this. And that was it. But I wasn't really talking to God. We weren't building a connection. We weren't building a relationship. And so one thing I like about the Psalms, I would always run to the Psalms because David, he's a man of God. He's after God's heart and he messes up time and time again some of the worst sins in one instance. But he's able to say, God, this is how I'm feeling. I feel like you forgot about me. I feel like if the wicked people of the world, are they're prospering and they're getting money and they have houses and they have all these nice things and I'm running for my life. And I'm running for my life and I'm doing something that you called me to do. And so he's able to express himself. So that's one thing I like about the Psalms is that it's, it's real. A lot of the things he talks about, he's, it's real emotions, it's not fake. Um, and so that's one thing we can take from the Psalms. Whenever you read it or whenever you're going through something, you can read the Psalms and say, it's okay. God doesn't want us to come to him with, fake, um, with a fake relationship. He wants to know what's really on our heart. And so we continue. So verse 2. There's two types of people in the world. There's no middle ground. There's a person who is not walking in the council. And there's a person who is uh, delighting in the law of the Lord. And the other person is dwelling with wicked and is, is doing those things. So he's saying, because we hear all the time, you know, there's some good people. And, and do good people go to heaven? That whole question. And, and so what he's saying is there's only two types of people. There's no middle ground. And the way that we can keep ourselves from walking in the counsel of the wicked, the way we can keep ourselves from standing in the way of sinners, the way we can keep ourselves from sitting in the seat of scoffers, is by delighting in the law of the Lord, is meditating on it day and night, day and night, day and night, in the morning, in the afternoon, when you're eating, when you're sleeping. Um, I mean, that's kind of hard to do, but... Yeah, so sometimes you'll, you'll have dreams about it, but just all day and night. So every area of our life. And so this is what happens. The person who does that, verse 3, he's like a tree planted by the streams of water. It yields its fruit in season. So I wanted to, to kind of think, so kind of hear that. He's like a tree planted by the streams of water. It yields its fruit in its season. What picture comes to mind? Is there something maybe you, when you were a young kid and you remember, man, I went to this place and there was that tree and it was a beautiful tree, uh, which is a side story. But I, Susie used to say, man, these trees are so beautiful. I was like, they look all the same. What do you mean? It's a beautiful tree. She's like, but look at the shape of it. It's beautiful. I was like, that looks like the tree next to it. Like they look exactly the same. And so now, now since being in Massachusetts and out here, there's some trees and I'm like, whoa, those trees are beautiful. Like the shape of them and how like they just kind of like the... The, the limbs just spread out so far and they cover and give shade. And I was like, 
Now I know what she meant. She wasn't crazy. There, there's these beautiful trees. But does it come to mind? Any, any kind of image come to mind? Maybe it was a movie you saw or something. That's what, whenever you're reading this, that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to picture that you're like a tree planted by streams of water. And you're like, man, I remember that. And it gives you that sense of like, you know, the kind of nostalgia. You're like, man, that was, that was beautiful. I remember that time. So that's what the, whenever you're reading the Psalms and you're reading any kind of Hebrew poetry, he wants you to think about that. He wants you to experience it. He wants you to come into the Bible with him and kind of experience the Bible with him. Um, I remember when, um, not, yeah, when I was growing up, we would always go to Wimberley, Texas, which is about an hour from here. And there's a place called the Blue Hole. And over there, there's a tree that you can go on top of the tree and jump into the water. And it was amazing. I love that. And then there's a, they also have a string tied to a ring so you can swing into the water and just jump in. And those are like some of my, my favorite memories. And so when I read this, I'm like, man, I remember that tree because it was big and it was tough. And people, and, and you know, skinny people, heavy set people, tall people, whatever, would go into the tree and that tree is still there. That tree is still standing. And he's saying, that's what I want you to be like. You're like a tree planted by streams of water. You're not going to be moved. You're not going to be pushed. There's other trees that come, uh, especially like in hurricane season, you see trees knocked over, you see trees uprooted, and you see all these different, this kind of damage. But then there's some trees, it's like this tree has been here for years. And he's saying, I want you to be strong like that. Um, so uh, years ago, uh, someone had talked about the illustration of what happens to trees when there's a drought. So whenever there's a drought, we think, oh, the trees are going to shrivel up and die. And some do, some plants do. But whenever there's a drought, the first thing the trees do after there's no water for a while is their roots start going deep. Let's say this is the ground and the trees here. The roots start going deep and they start going deeper and deeper because they're searching for water. They need the nutrients. They need the water. Otherwise, they're going to die. So what they do is instead of the drought killing the tree, it grows the, the roots deeper and it's searching and it's searching and the same thing happens to us. We go through hard times and we go through situations, but it makes our roots deep. So whenever the trials come against us, we're not going to be moved. Just like those big oak trees, just like the big uh, beautiful trees that we see that they've been there for time and time and hurricane after hurricane. It's been pushed, but it's not going down and we're not going to be knocked down. And so he's saying... We're like trees planted by streams of water. We're going to yield our fruit in season. So he's not promising, hey, everything's going to be all good. It's going to be, everything's going to be easy. But he's saying whenever those things come, your, your, your leaves are not going to wither, wither. And you're going to bear fruit. And you're going to be like a tree planted by water. And you're not going to be easily knocked down. But, and then again, he goes back to comparison in verse 4. The wicked are not so. They are like chaff in the wind that drives away does anybody know what shaft is so what they do is uh the farmers is they would kind of pick it up in the wind and all the shaft will blow away because it's very light but the the wheat was was heavier right and so it would it would kind of fall to the ground and all the other shaft will be blown away so he's saying he's comparing these things you're going to be like a tree planted versus wheat that's blown away we're in verse three because uh what happens oh actually uh no verse four we're in verse four because he's saying, you're not going to be easily moved, but the wicked, they're going to be easily moved. They're going to be blown away. Even wind is going to be able to take them off of their course. Verse 5, Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And so there was another thing. So there's a Christian rapper, his name is The Truth. And so he kind of summarized what many people have said. He said, just because judgment ain't sudden doesn't mean it ain't coming. And so what we can sometimes is look at the, the wicked people and we can say, God, why are they prospering and I'm not? Why are they doing so well and I'm not? And so the thing is, their judgment hasn't come yet, but that doesn't mean it's not coming. Because what we can do, and there's even, even one of the Psalms, he says, God, I might as well go and live like a sinner because at least I'll be able to enjoy this life. At least I might as well, you know, I might as well enjoy this life because we only get one, you know, the whole YOLO thing. And, and, and so he's saying, don't be tempted. I know you see other people prospering, but don't be tempted. Because just like any tree, like avocado trees, like I love avocados and guacamole and things like that. But they take forever to give, uh, I think like five to ten years just to give one avocado. And that's a long time. 
But it's but whenever it starts giving, then it just it, like a bunch of them start coming, and every season in its season, it just keeps giving them. But it takes time, and it's growing, and it's building the nutrients, and it's getting stronger, and things like that. So if you you think about a tree versus wheat, wheat grows like every season, every once a year. But a tree, it takes years and years and years and years, and it takes those roots going deeper and deeper and deeper. So it's, 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 he's saying, it's taking time, and it's, it's taking time, but it's okay because I'm developing something inside of you. I'm growing something inside of you, and it's okay. It's going to take some time, but whenever you're grown and you're strong, whenever the hurricanes come, you're not going to be blown away. When those hard times come, you're not going to be blown away. You're going to be able to stand. And so that's what uh, David is trying to say. He's like, look, you can be one or two types of people. You can walk in the way of the wicked, but this is what's going to happen to them. What's going to happen is they're going to be blown away. They're not going to stand in the congregation of the righteous, but the wicked will perish. He's saying they're not going to inherit the kingdom. Maybe they inherit in some stuff right now, but they're not going to inherit the kingdom. Maybe they have some stuff now, but they're not going to be able to have real joy. They're still going to be paranoid. They're still going to be anxious. They're still going to be worried. Like you were saying, Michelle, like they're, they're still going to have that kind of anxiety. Like, man, is this person going to catch me or is he going to catch up to me or what's, you know, what's going to happen? And so, so I just kind of wanted to, to bring that because I wanted to leave that image. As you drive and you see these trees and these beautiful trees and you kind of think, am I going to be able to stand those hurricanes that do come? Am I going to be able to stand those, those things? And so we'll jump to Matthew chapter 7 and we'll end there. Um, because that's exactly what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7. When everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them is like a foolish person who built his house on sand. Right? Like, y'all been to the beaches, right? And you build sand castles. And what happens whenever the waves come in? And you're like, man, I built my house like a little bit too close to the water. It just... It just sinks and it collapses. He's saying that's the same thing. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew against and beat the house and it fell and it was a great fall. He's saying it was totally destroyed. You weren't able to redo that. And so he's saying the same thing. There's two types of people. In, in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, he says the same thing. He says there's two types of people. There's a fruit, there's good fruit, there's bad fruit. There's, a, there's people um, who are judging and there's people who are judging in the, in the right way. There's people who know me and people who don't know me. There's people who build on a rock and people who build on sand. And so he says, how do I know? Right? The question is, okay, God, how do I know which of these am I going to be? How do I know which of these people am I? He says, this is the difference. Because people, all everybody kind of knows and everybody's going to hear. He's like, you're going to hear God's word. The way you know which of the people you are is you hear his words and you do them. Because if you hear the words and you don't do them, he says it's like a foolish man. That's the only difference. The only difference. We have the same information. What separates them from us is not that they have more knowledge and they have that. Because even if we don't have a lot of knowledge, the, the little knowledge that we have, what's going to divide us is... Are we going to do the word? Are we going to do what he tells us? Are we going to do what he tells us? Uh, and, and so there's, there's a saying in, in churches that, you know, I want a fresh word from God. I want him to give me a fresh word. I want him to tell me something new and something different, a revelation. But sometimes God doesn't have to tell us something new. He's like, I need you to do the things that I told you before. So, uh, so sometimes it's not just saying, okay, God, I, give, I need a fresh word. It's okay, God. Remind me of the word you already told me and help me to obey it. <laughs> Remind me what you told me a while back. Because uh, sometimes, I mean, we, we open the Bible and we try to do that. Like, all right, God, I need a fresh word for today. And he's like, I just need you to, to do the first thing. Love people. Love me. Love your kids. You know, those, those simple things. And then, you know, he builds us up. But that's going to be what's important is saying, okay, God, am I obeying you? Am I listening? Am I doing what you called me to do? And if not, help me to do it. Help me to build my, my, my house. And it kind of reminds me of the three little pigs, right? Um, there's an underlining story about that. But, you know, the one, he builds his house out of straw. The big bad wolf comes, he blows it down. Then the next one, he builds it out of sticks. I think it's sticks, right? And then he comes and he blows it down. Then the last one, he's kind of building and he's taking his time. And they're out there dancing and doing their little, you know, their little square dance, the little pigs in the book. 
And they're like, come on, come with us, come and he rests. And he's like, no, I'm building my house. I'm building my house out of brick and it takes longer. I have to make sure it's level. I have to put everything in its place. And they're out there celebrating. And then sure enough, the wolf comes and the two, two other pigs come. The, the wolf huffs and puffs, but he doesn't blow the house down because it was a strong foundation. And, and building a strong foundation takes longer. Some people are going to be celebrating and happy and joyous. And we're like, man, I, I want to do that, but I got, I, I got to build my house. I got to build my family. I got to build my faith. I got to make sure that I'm strong because when those storms come, you have a regular house out of, you know, uh, uh, wood and then you have a house made out of brick. It's not going to move. Maybe the windows will blow out, but that house is going to be there. And we've seen it uh, many times, especially in Houston. Uh, but... So yeah, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and pray. And again, Father, we thank you, God. We thank you, God, that you, you are speaking to us, God, in different things. There's different areas you're speaking to us. And Father, we don't have to be overwhelmed and say, man, I got to change this and I got to change this and I got to change that. Father, but you said your yoke is easy. Your yoke is easy and your burden is light, Father. So I pray you put your burden on us, not what religion has said, not what other people have said, but I pray you would show us, okay, God, what are you saying to us today so that we can hear what you're saying and that we can do it? Father, I pray, God, that, that our heart and our mind and our actions line up, God, because sometimes they don't. What we believe and what we, what we know and what we do, they don't always line up, Father, but you want us to be in line. You want us to have good alignment, Father, just like a vehicle when we're driving and it's not aligned, we're going to go to the left when we're trying to go straight. Or we're going to veer to the right and we're trying to go left. Father, I pray, God, that you would help us, God, in our walking, in our standing, in our thinking. Father, in everything that we do, everything we put in our mind, everything we say to ourselves about ourselves, everything we say about others, God, I pray that you would help us, God, to see how you see. I pray you would help us to see ourselves how you see us, God, because you see us in perfect and beautiful, and righteous, and bold, and creative, and loving, and head, and not to tell. And I pray we would see ourselves like that. And I pray, God, that we would use our influence. God, you would call us to be influencers. I pray we would use our influence to help others, to break chains off of their lives. Father, you said that the church is, is a hospital for the broken. Father, and I pray, God, as, as you heal us, we become doctors, and we, became, we become people who can help. We become um, all those different things that help people to, to deliver what you have put inside of them, to heal and to bandage and to, to, to help, Father. Father, but we have to be healed first, so I pray you, you continue healing our hearts, healing our wounds, healing our past. Father, we thank you, God, that you are moving in us, God. We thank you for what you're doing, and we just pray, God, that you be glorified. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.